Welcome to Terror in Tandem, a podcast about finding entertainment in the macabre. Hosted by the knowledgeable and lovable Laura and Richard Mathiason. Each episode, we discuss the horror genre, from books to film to TV and beyond. Sometimes, even from the beyond. <laughs> you can find us online at terrorintandem.com and on Instagram at terrorintandem. That was a good one. Oh. I'm sure people will like it. Well, I do get a lot of fan mail that I write myself. Mm. And send to myself. Right. It's normal. It's a yeah. normal thing that normal people do. And, it, you know, it's why you need all those magazines. Because <laughs> I cut them out like hostage style. Yeah. yeah. Cut the it letters takes, out. honestly, forever. I don't know why I do it like that. I don't know why you have to pretend you're your own crazed fan. Just it, be a regular, normal, praising fan. Instead, you're like... Listen, it adds to the experience. You deserve to die. It's just the thing I have, okay? We don't need to get that into it. Everyone's got a thing. That's my thing. Yeah, you got a few of them. I do. I got a bag of things. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of bags of things. Um, Let's tell you what bag of things you should be doing this August. Oh, man. It's August. Yes. You guys. Congratulations, world, on getting through the hottest month. Getting through? You, you don't understand what you're saying. It's over. It isn't over. But, it's never over. No, but we Summer got lasts it. until September. Um, you had, didn't even let me finish. Getting through July, which was the hottest month ever recorded. Yeah. Ever recorded. So, neat. I mean, it's the beginning of August, so it could still be the hottest August but ever recorded. But it has recorded. actually really been lovely outside It this really week. has, but yeah. you can't. It's like a no-hitter. I know. You can't then say. You're so superstitious. I'm, I'm just stitious. Oh, just a healthy amount of stition. Yeah. Well, speaking of which... That's a seamless segue into this episode. Yeah, let's sandwich this episode with some recommendations. Perfect. Yes. We're so good at this. Yeah. Um, um, it's August, so, you know, it's, it's that hot. time of month where you just said it was lovely. We just talked about this, uh, yeah, but and it, now you're like, it's hot. It's probably going to be hot, though. <laughs> Yeah, but, because you ruined yeah, it. I you did. put it out there. I stitioned it. I mean, just That's because means, right? we're having some nice breeze doesn't mean that, you know, other people some of the southern states and yeah. Texas and you know, uh desert states aren't at a hundred like I mean, Arizona no, sure. just had the highest temps. It's crazy. And it's just in America. I mean yeah. we have our listeners in Israel and well, obviously, Germany that we are also suffering from heat and... Listen, this is a perfect opportunity for us to talk about clean coal, which is a totally Okay, real so thing. we're going to make our August recommendations just, you know, like we always do, our monthly recommendations. And Huzzah! I'm going to go first. Our monthlies. Uh, I'm sorry, everyone. So am for I. For him. Um, Same here. I am going to start with a movie. Oh. I'm going to recommend a movie called The Passenger. Nice. Which comes out August 4th. And, um, you know, you might be like, oh, wait a minute. Isn't this a book? Isn't this another movie? Well, yeah, but this movie is new. A 2023 movie coming out in August. And it was directed by Carter Smith, who also directed The Ruins. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. He's, Based on a book. Which he's was a filmmaker also good. and fashion photographer. Huh. From Maine. And we know spooky things happen there. Yeah. So he's he's directing this. Uh, it's st starring Kyle Gallner. Okay. Um, Sounds familiar. Yeah, you know who he is. He was in um, Smile. He was in oh, yeah. The Haunting of Connecticut. Yes, he was yes, in yes. Scream. Yes, he's in lots of... He's been around a for a lot of I think he was like a kid actor for a while. Jennifer's Body he was in. Yeah, yeah. Played a high school student. Yeah. Yeah. You get definitely a character up and coming, like a younger character actor. Yeah, yeah. Um, Always like him. He's really good. And it also stars uh, this actor called Johnny Birchold. Okay. Uh, I believe I'm getting that right. Hey, Johnny. He's younger. Thanks for listening. I mean, he looks young. He's like 29, but... Um, That's not young? I don't know <laughs> many things that he's been in, so he's fairly new to me. And Lisa Wheel, who is Paris Geller from Gilmore Girls. 
Oh, Paris. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. She's also been in the marvelous Mrs. Maisel scandal, how to get away with murder. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. For sure. She's a she's a vet. Yeah, she is. Um so this film is about uh two characters that go sort of on a killing spree. One is reluctant and sort of kidnapped along. Mm. Um and I mean, I would watch the trailer, but it feels like, you know, we always talk about how trailers give it give, away. Give everything away. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's <sighs> that sucks so badly, you know, to be robbed of that first time experience. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the synopsis of the film is that a man is forced to face his fears and confront his troubled past. He's got to find a way to survive when his coworker snaps. And goes on a violent killing spree. Oh, shit. Yikes. So it's like a road trip movie, but also, also a, like a fine young, no. Uh, natural born killers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Badlands. Throw killing kind yeah, of shit. Yeah. Like collateral. But one is re- not participatory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it sounds think, terrifying because like yeah. it sounds like it could possibly happen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the trailer does not mince visuals <laughs> mincing visuals um it, it, mm. i mean it's it's it looks like a pretty violent movie but also yeah. one of like an indie version of you know what is a like a horrific experience it seems yeah and maybe there's going to be a little stockholm syndrome situation i don't know cool i thought it looked really good cast. interesting but violent yeah. and you know, check it out if you want. Or don't. What's it called again? The Passenger. Nice. August, August 4th. 4th. Oh, that sounds really cool. I am going next because there are only two of us and that's how this works. Oh, boy. My first recommendation is Last Voyage of the Demeter. Mm, being directed, Dracula. Mm, being directed by Andre Overdahl. For um, those of you don't that don't know, that's how Dracula got to... England? Carfax Abbey in England. Yes. So from um, Transylvania? Director Andre Overdahl, who has done uh the very, very fun Troll Hunter and the surprisingly good um scary stories to tell in the in the dark, and also the very, very good um Autopsy of Jane Doe with Brian Cox and Emil Hirsch. That movie's great. And fuck off! Fuck off. Roy er. Um Logan Roy. I didn't I never watched it. Yeah, it was anyway, terrible. Don't So <laughs> this fucking movie has been in the works since two thousand and three. They've been trying to make this movie for twenty goddamn years. And as you mentioned, Last Voyage of the Demeter is based on a single chapter of the uh Bram Stoker novel Dracula. It is the uh honestly it's probably my favorite chapter of the whole book, The Captain's Log. And it is the voyage, it's the captain's um, account of the voyage that brings Dracula from his native Transylvania to Carfax Abbey in England. The captain doesn't make it. No one does. See, that's the thing is, they discover this book. Dracula, for anyone who hasn't read it, is an epistolary novel. So it's a series of journal entries and letters and things Mm -hmm. like that. It's not a straight prose narrative. So... um, this log unfolds as kind of a slow burn. You know, things start to go wrong. The crew is superstitious. They bring this th- parcel on board, and there's like a lot of mystery around it. It's a it. box of dirt, yeah, because that's what Dracula sleeps in um, dirt from his native land. So, anyway, the, the, the chapter is ch- very, very chilling because, um, quite famously, the book rolls into harbor. With no one on board. Except for this parcel. Well, they don't know that Dracula's inside of it, but no living being is on board this ghost ship at this Mm -hmm. point. So anyway, this movie has been in the works since 2003, as I said. Um, It was going to be directed by 30 Days of Night's David Slade, Mm, and it was going to star Viggo Mortensen. Oh, Um, great actor. I would love to see that version of the movie. I have a running list of Elseworlds movies that I want to see, like unmade movies. 
um, Alejandro Jodorowsky's Dune, George Miller's Justice League Mortal. I want to see the version that David Slade and Viggo Mortensen were going to do. Unfortunately, didn't uh, didn't work out. Now, this movie has been in development so long, it, it has been attached to directors such as Marcus Nispel, um, Neil Marshall, Stefan uh, Ruzovitsky, who's directed The Incredible Cold Hell and Anatomy as an Austrian director. Um, it's going to star Numi Rapace. It's going to star Ben Kingsley. Uh, it's going to star... Was he going to be Va- Jude uh, Law. Dracula? I think Ben Kingsley was probably uh, going to be Dracula. He um, might be Va- Dracula, actually. So he is not. So who... Re- no, I mean oh, in, in real, real life. life. <laughs> So uh, what we're getting this time around um, is Corey Hawkins, David Daschelmain, and Javier Botet as Dracula. Um, now, Javier Botet has been – he's a, a Spanish actor. He's been in really great shit like Wreck and The Conjuring 2. Um, so it's a really – it's a very good cast and a good director. So I, I don't – I'm only mentioning its, its twisted development because I want to point out the perseverance – of you know the producers and the writer really going through disappointment after disappointment after disappointment you know imagine having all these incredible people attached to your movie and then the crushing feeling of having them leave your movie but what Harvey R. Botet was in Mama and Slender Man yeah he's he's a very talented he's Spanish especially physical actor I, I yes you said that I did oh I'm sorry see um so, and Liam Cunningham actually plays the captain. Yes. And for those of you that don't know, he's always been on the sea. <laughs> he's the Onion Knight. He's the Onion Knight. Yes, mm-hmm. from Game of Thrones. The wonderful Liam Cunningham, also from the underrated movie Let Us Pray. Check that one out. Um, Pray, spelled P-R-E-Y. I- ignore the pun. The movie is actually pretty good. So I am looking forward to this because I've been looking forward to this since 2005 when I first heard about it. Well, um, since you read that chapter. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I never thought it would really be a movie, but... Um, Great. So, yeah. Really interested in this. Corey Hawkins uh, had an amazing turn as Dr. Dre in Straight Outta Compton. Interested to see him in a period horror piece. That's a very he different... He was in the reboot of 24 also. 24 Legacy. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, but but that's cool. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot of hype. It's long in the works, but the people behind... It uh, and the, the talent involved are pretty solid. So coming out in theaters August 11th, Last Voyage of the Demeter. Uh, my next recommendation is a collection of short stories from one of Taryn Tandem's favorite authors, Ooh. Josh Mallerman. Uh. It's called Spin a Black Yarn, and it comes out August 15th. That's an excellent title. I know. Um, so it's a collection of five tales um, from the shadows of the human soul. Ooh. Um, and one of the tales is shadows, that, you say? Yeah. One of the tales that I'm most interested in is when a sister insists to her little brother that a strange presence is in the house. Um, but it turns out that the house is the problem is it or is it their memory of their childhoods i don't know interesting it's gonna play on memory it's gonna play on you know i love uh, a good sibling tale yeah honestly. unreliable yeah. uh recollections childhood trauma i always wanted my brother and i to be like basically like sam and dean from supernatural but he wasn't into it he's squeamish yeah so can't can't stomp demons yeah and you don't like bugs yeah, well. So I, I don't know how that would have ever. All right. All my fantasies have to make sense. Come on. No. Fantasy um, police. But for those of you that don't know, um, we are big fans of Josh Mallerman. Oh, hell yeah. Um, Mad Black Wheel, Bird Box, um, House at the Bottom of the Lake. What's it called? House at the Bottom of the Lake? Yep. And Daphne, you recommended. I did. Um, as, as you mentioned, we're big fans. Yeah, he so he mostly writes short stories or novellas. Um, he's also in a rock band called the High Strung. For real? Yeah. Well, wow, he's like really going down the Stephen King route. Yeah. Um, he's my age, which I won't tell you how old. But only twenty five. Wow. <laughs> Amazing I success. I mean, do I wish? I don't know. Um, 
and so I think that this is going to be, you know, another great collection. This is a great way to introduce yourself to Josh Mallerman and see if you like him or not. Yeah, we really recommend short stories in the short form here because it's like it's a low stakes introduction. If it grabs your fancy, great. Go check out a bigger chunk of work. If it stinks, then you've wasted like a half hour. And um, not to judge a book by a cover, but this cover is pretty great. Um, so, I love judging books by covers. Yeah. We've talked about cover art a lot here. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a really interesting cover. It it has a little bit of like childhood uh, wonderment to it, but also like darkness. So there's like all this uh, <sighs> woven uh, art mushrooms and leaves and nice bird skulls yeah i feel like josh mallerman and paul tremblay are two authors that get pretty much like automatic wrecks from us yeah absolutely it's just gonna happen so check that one out that comes out um august 15th sounds great do you want to take a break sure Have you ever felt helpless when someone you know has fallen ill? Worried you'll be questioned because you are the last person to see them alive? Well, hire a visiting demon and let all those worries fall away. With our fleet of discreet, well-trained former medical professionals, we take care of that sickly person in your life who you've decided it's just their time to go. Our visiting demons will add that bubble in the IV for the neighbor whose dog just won't stop barking. Or they can add a special night-night cocktail to the pill collection of the great aunt who's just stubborn enough to burn through all the money she promised you. And don't worry, our services also extend beyond the sickly with our elite packages. With one of our elite packages, you can rid yourself of that annoying ladder climber at work who just keeps getting in the way of your big promotion. Or you can turn that road rage into road relief and send a demon to the home of that monster truck driver. Don't wait for natural causes when you can hire a visiting demon. They put the period at the end of life so you won't have to. This is a fake ad for a fake product on a horror-themed podcast. Visiting Demons does not exist, but does it? Hello. Oh. Um, so we're back with your... <laughs> <laughs> we're back with your recommendations what yeah. is it oh i'm excited about this Get one it's over with my second one is birth rebirth being uh brought to you by director laura moss from ifc films this is coming out on august 18th on our beloved shutter mm. so um this movie it, it looks fascinating it actually has a really great trailer it's starring marin ireland who um is in lots of stuff but she was particularly incredible in the recent the dark and the wicked um so anyway um marin ireland plays a a brilliant but morally questionable uh scientist doctor who um she she uh, is spotted by judy reyes's character who is a mother who's brought her her young daughter in who's had a, a medical episode and her daughter dies now judy reyes uh in her grief on her way out of the hospital notices marin ireland's character taking the body so she follows her, um, starts to kind of stalk her, trying to find out, eventually breaks into her apartment and finds her daughter, very much not dead, hooked up to a bunch of medical equipment and some kind of strange experiments going on. So it's basically a modern, uh, another retelling. I know I rec- recommended recently a retelling of the very same story, but it is Frankenstein. Mm. So Marin Ireland is playing a, uh, Dr. Frankenstein type character and, um, The twist here, though, is Judy Reyes is the mother of of this girl who's been reanimated, and she moves in and refuses to leave, says, that is my daughter, and if you are going to be doing this fucking experiment on her, I'm staying. It seems like that causes a lot of tension, um, you know, because Marin Ireland's Dr. Frankenstein character is um, not the kind of person, I think, that wants a lot of scrutiny on her, Um, but it just looks really 
interesting this setup of the the Machiavellian coldness of of this 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 doctor who's clearly a sociopath um versus the ferocity of a mom in 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 distress for her child add to that the fact that there's definitely something wrong with this kid obviously it, you bring kids back from the dead they're always fucking crazy um so i'm really interested in this it premiered at sundance uh got a lot of great buzz she Laura was Moss, in the boogeyman too who? Marin Ireland. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, she's in everything. She's really, she's really great. She's yeah. got a, you know, she's got that sort of intensity, natural she, intensity. She's got a great quiet look. Intensity. Yeah. Deep, deep set eyes yeah. that give her like a, 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 a very distinct and intense look. Um, she's a really talented actor. I have, I've, I'm used to seeing her play roles that are different than this this seems to be a much more assertive character um and i'm very interested to see how she portrays it because she's a brilliant actor and, and i love it when when actors branch out and try new things anyway i i'm really looking forward to birth rebirth uh love shutter we recently did a, a bit of a purge of our streaming services and and we, we just we just couldn't get just couldn't quit shutter so um awesome yeah check it uh, out on yeah, sure. august 18th I have something coming out on August 18th. I'll watch mine first. It's not a watch. It's a play. Oh. So my next recommendation is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game coming out August 18th on yes. Xbox. Yes. Yes. Um, so why I'm recommending this um, is because the game is based on the original horror film, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. They. I guess they... The developers only had the rights to the first movie, so that's that's really, fine. Yeah, I mean it's the only one that's like any good. Um, and I believe the um, maybe the second one, the creators is Gun Interactive. Okay. Um, and they were gonna do Friday the Thirteenth. Ooh, talk about tricky legal issues. Yeah, but that yeah. was like killed, and so they. Actually, they did do Friday the 13th, but and it was killed. It was killed. Yeah, yeah, I remember when that happened. Yeah, yeah. it was pretty sad. Um, so this particular game is just going to be focused on the first film. That is very cool. Yeah, um, and they do, you know, it's like licensing is a mess. It's all just an issue. But yeah. um, I want to play as Grandpa. <laughs> well, uh, it's give like so far the early feedback has been positive um it's gonna be sort of like a familiar loop of fans of day by daylight or evil dead yeah it's like um it's survivors a, it, attempting to escape player controlled evils it's a multiplayer game um so one side uh are playing a group of you know normies uh, trying to escape the, the the horror house of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and the other side are playing members of the family. Yep. Um, so yeah, like like the previous Friday the Thirteenth or the uh, aforementioned Dead by Daylight, um, it's um, I think it's called like an asymmetrical. It's not a game I type of game I normally play because I'm a single player. Cat yeah, but usually. if you have like teams playing, it if seems like buddies, it'll be really fun. Exactly. Yeah. I think like if this came out when I was in college, I'd be all over it. But I was playing like Counter Strike in college because I am a hundred. And it's also gonna be on the PS five. Sweet. So um and that comes out August eighteenth. Looking forward to that. Here's hoping too. Yeah. I mean they really were success it was it was really unfortunate that something so asinine as you know like legal rights kept this really cool game from from staying and it was beloved by fans so uh, i think people are going to be really happy to see something else coming out of the studio that will be sticking around yeah for sure and you know i think limiting its scope is ultimately going to work in its favor so my final recommendation oh for the month of august is another shutter exclusive Hello, Shudder. We're waiting. Anytime. At Terra in Tandem. Yeah. Um, August 25th, written and directed by Stuart Thorndike, who previously directed the understated Lyle in 2014 with Gabby Hoffman. Um, you're familiar with Gabby Hoffman, but I don't. Yes, yeah, she was in Now and Then. 
Okay, okay, right. And other things. I and mean, she's been in a bunch of stuff, but she's... Lyle's an interesting film. It's a slow, almost like mumblecore style horror. Um, kind of in the vein of Rosemary's Baby, sort of. Um, so um, Thorndike's uh, newest film is is my recommendation. It's Bad Things, coming to Shudder uh, August 25th. Now, this is starring Gail Rankin, who's best known for playing Sheila the She-Wolf on Glow. Um, I know you yeah, watched that. Of course. That was a great show. Um, so this one is a, a queer horror film um, starring almost exclusively a cast of women. Um, so Rankin and a group of other women, group of friends in the Northeast, they plan a weekend getaway at a snowy resort. Um, they are there to reconnect, relax, recuperate. Uh, but according to the synopsis, peace doesn't last long as the ghosts of guests past and relationships long buried come to light. Soon enough, their trip transforms into a psychological tailspin and bloody nightmare. Mm. Um, the trailer and the buzz make it seem really interesting. It's a group of women. I think there are some instances of perhaps, you know, some unrequited love, messy past relationships, um, there, it's a very strictly LGBT film um, that focuses on feminine relationships and feminine rage and how that's manifested. And it also seems like a really twisted fucking movie, like kind of a, a, almost a black comedy. Um, these women do, as this sort of weekend deteriorates, it seems like these women do more and more terrible things to themselves and each other, um, despite descending into you know violence and paranoia so thorndike her, uh, herself said i wanted to create a world of women and non-binary people who shake off polite conditionings and finally roar where are where are all the female travis bickles and jack torrance's hmm. bad things answers that so um a female travis bickle which was robert de niro's character from taxi driver and jack torrance which is someone you should know uh that sounds pretty cool um yeah, so as I said, it's an LGBT story of female rage, twisted, fucked up shenanigans, and a bit of the old ultra violence. So, um, as Billy on the street might say, let's go, lesbians, let's go. <laughs> I'm excited about this one. August 25th on Shutter, looking for a twisted murder, friendships gone awry weekend fucked up story starring all women. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Awesome. Well, I have another like recommendation it's a little bit of a cheat but it, it does apply um and it's very necessary to recommend um it is a new doc documentary that's coming very limited theaters so limited. very limited the exclusive theatrical release you have to august be invited it's a very limited release in theaters august 11th and then video on demand in september so it is a little bit of a cheat but it is called King on Screen. And you got it. It's about Stephen King on screen. Never heard of him. So um, what's really interesting about this is um, more than 50 directors, you know, have adapted the works of Stephen King. And this documentary interviews 25 of those directors, including Frank Darabont, um, Tom Holland, not that one, um, Mick Garris, and our favorite Mike Flanagan. Also actors and uh, in some of the films like James Caan and Amy Irving. Um, so it's really exciting to have this come out. I'm That's totally really cool. going to watch it. I It won't release around us, but... Uh, I just really wanted to mention it since we're such big Stephen King deep divers. And and it sounds like they're really covering uh, the full range. I mean, even even they had to split it up. See? I mean, some of the things that they say uh, are some of the things that have been echo echoed on our own podcast. So we might need to get our last Stephen King episode recorded before this comes out and influences us. Mm. So King on screen. That sounds awesome. Yeah. I love documentaries, you know. You know, I um, bef I do have one quick mention I, I want to make. Um, I, I am... So, all right. It's the Meg 2, The Trench. 
Now, uh, I'm going to level with you. I didn't read the Meg. I didn't see the Meg 1. Um, I'm not discounting the joys of Jason Statham punching sharks and going, Oi, you cunt! Um, but it was PG-13, and it just didn't look good, and from all accounts, it wasn't. I'm mentioning this. But it got this. a second. I am mentioning this. Yeah. That's the thing. It got a sequel, and it's got, it's being directed by Ben Wheatley. Ben Wheatley, one of my favorite directors, who has directed such other action extravaganzas as A Field in England, Kill List, and Sightseers. I mean, this guy pretty much exclusively does weird British understated horror movies that are pretty dreamlike and hard to make narrative sense of sometimes looking at you a field in England you made sense to me but it took a while I can't even fucking imagine what a Ben Wheatley Meg movie (laughs) is I'm probably gonna see it just because he's directing it I don't think I need to see the Meg one to get the backstory I'm sure you can enter into this one it's um I saw the trailer I'm going to compare it, I guess, to... Sharknado? Well, the closest thing I can think of in Ben Wheatley's catalog would be Free Fire with uh, that crazy action movie with Brie Larson he did a few years ago. Um, But I don't... Shit. It's crazy. It's like... It's like a Godzilla movie being directed by Terrence Malick. It's just... it's. I'm interested. Um, So, yeah. The Meg 2. It's it's coming out sometime in August. I, I... don't didn't even care enough to look at the date, honestly, um, because I'm I can't believe I'm recommending it. But Ben Wheatley, that's that's the reason. That's uh, coming out August fourth, so any, hey, any day now. Oh, uh, imminent. Yes. So I'll know if uh, if it's worth it or not. It won't be. Uh, so yeah, uh, hopefully we uh, cooled you down with some hot recommendations because Ooh. it still is summer. Sure is. Uh, so check out whatever you want and don't bother us on the things that you don't check out because it's not our problem. We didn't write them. Bye. Bye, everybody. Terror in Tandem is written, produced, and recorded by Laura and Richard Mathiason and edited and mixed by Richard Mathiason. Our theme was written and performed by Carrie Denver, and all other music was written and performed by David Sispanik. All opinions expressed on this podcast are our own and should be taken as such. Thanks for listening, and please remember to give us a like, a review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. We're standing right behind you.